record this. So an, a, a number of prominent uh, social epidemiologists um, in the states, I mentioned George Kaplan, uh, Sandra Galea, uh, Ana diaz Rue, and uh, have argued, and I uh, sort of mentioned in, in many of my teachings, the fact that um, these life course effects and the effects of say early life experiences on later life outcomes, um, the effects of inter intergenerational uh, trauma and, uh, and uh, potentially epigenetic effects whereby stresses during pregnancy or you know, at, at time of gestation may propagate from one generation to another. Those, those form some, of, some very potent motivators for agent-based modeling. And um, uh, there's a reason for that because agent-based models allow us to capture history-dependent effects. So in other words, um, an individual's history over time um, can shape their, their characteristics now can be shaped by their longitudinal history, their particular biography, and in fact, factors that came in at time of their birth. And, and a lot of our work in gestational diabetes area, um, very notably, but you know, increasingly it's, it's things we, we are seeking to really grapple with in our, uh, our work with uh, mental health uh, and substance use um, are really uh, seeking to deal with, with these issues. Uh, with gestational diabetes, uh, there's a very good case to be made of epigenetic effects. And we know in rats, and then from subsequent rhesus monkey uh, studies that you know, these you know, very, these are controlled studies. I mean, I, it, it troubles me from an animal ethics perspective to contemplate it, but where they take, you know, monkeys away from, 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 from their parents, for example, and expose them to other environments that are not as nurturing. And, and you see the effects um, of, for that monkey later in life, very profound effects. But you can also see it intergenerationally where, you know, a monkey, um, a female monkey exposed in that way at birth um, to, to adverse effects, lives with those effects, gives birth uh, herself, and the babies in that next generation are different from babies uh, born to mothers not exposed. Um, you know themselves um, at at youth, um, so it it carries over. And this history dependence, this this dependence of the current situation on the history of um, that individual and that individual's uh, progenitors, uh, the, those can be captured nicely in a model. Um, uh, what what what's critical is, I mean, at an operational level to capture those effects. Um, you know, we have elements of agent state that can keep around um, components of those exposures. So there can be adverse childhood exposures, ACEs, you know, that are that are kept literally in an agent's biography in a in a in an agent-based model. And in other words, each agent could could record in principle, you know, whether they were they had a low birth weight, whether they had um, you know, an exposure to um, a traumatic event as a child, um, uh, whether they were separated from from their parent. Um, so that'd be one way to do it. But another way is, you know, just at the time of that separation early in life, maybe it leads to uh, a a different subsequent set of developmental parameters that then shape that, that individual's um, progression through life um, as, as kind of an aspect of those, those developmental parameters. And we've had some collaborators on grant proposals or collaborators on other projects like Corey Newdorf, who are very interested in this issue of, of, of childhood development. And and I've had enough contact with researchers in that area to know, you know, there are these um, developmental implications of these adverse effects that um, you know, that play out. So an agent can can keep track of 
that it was exposed in these ways for later shaping later life trajectories, or you could have some sort of record of, you know, their developmental stage or their, their, um, uh, their, their uh, stress, um, um, th their preferred stress response mechanisms or what have you in a way that might in subsequent interactions disadvantage them or otherwise put them at, at risk. Um, and um, the effects here are profound. I mean, Barker's studies in the UK, I think in the mid 20th century were, were suggestive of profound effects on later life chronic disease burden, for example, of early life deprivation. Um, and there are these studies from the Dutch famine you know, or uh, during World War II, I think, and, and others that have really suggested profound effects. I think for intergenerational effects and in utero effects, um, you can record things like birth weight as outcomes, et cetera. Um, uh, you can also record, you know, was this child exposed to a dysglycemic or to a cortisol rich environment in pregnancy? And again, you could treat that as kind of a, a dichotomous, you know, were they or, or continuous, how much were they exposed to? But you could also characterize it um, um, potentially, again, with developmental indicators of some sort. And I, I say these things not knowing what the details would be of the developmental indicators, but knowing that um, the colleagues uh, uh, who, who specialize in this area of childhood development and, and developmental processes, I think have done a lot of work with this. And there's just been amazing work done by Clyde Hertzman's group um, uh, out, out at UBC. I, I, I don't know that he's there anymore, but, um, um, but I've had some good contact with that group. And I, I think... Um, the issue is not so much in my mind, can agent-based models uh, allow capturing of these factors? They can, you know, you could have mother pass to baby at time of birth, as much information about the mother's context as is needed. We have models doing that for gestational diabetes. You can record at time of birth, the infant's characteristics. You could record at incidents of trauma, you know, the, the, the nature of the trauma, um, or you could have it impact developmental variables. The real need here, I think, um, the real, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, thing that would need to be addressed to realize this is not, it's not um, the model mechanisms to keep track of this. Those are readily available. Um, we have all that flexibility in agent-based models. What I think is needed is the theory uh, behind that. And I'm not, I'm not saying that theory is not available. It's just, it's a point of, of ignorance on my part to know how, to what degree we're at the stage of theory building with models uh, in that area, or to what degree we're at the, at the point of theory explication with models, um, to what degree we're dealing with very, very stylized models that just try to play out very simple, um, undeniable facts about that situation and see consequences or to what degree could we explicate established theory, you know, related to developmental variables and outcomes and calibrate it to data, uh, et cetera. Um, I'm, um, uh, I'm not sure where it is, but I know, I know there's sets of networks across Canada alone and in the US, some of whom I know personally who, who you know, could probably help us fill in those gaps if you were interested. I, personally, I think of this as one of the biggest opportunities and needs um, for agent-based modeling. I, I am particularly acutely aware day to day of the need for this for thinking about, uh, again, early life trauma, um, adverse childhood experiences on substance use um, uh, propensity and, and, and predisposition or, or, or vulnerability. 
um, to those sort of disorders. Um, but I'm also aware of it in terms of childhood development and the gaps that come in with um, um, inadequate investment in you know, equal playing fields for children leading to very different outcomes in terms of life achievement. And I know Corey Newdorf, um, who of course we're both working with, is, is uh, someone who, who shares a lot of my interests and has a lot of knowledge in this area and has a lot of interest in bringing in data from educational side as, as well as you know, knowledge on, on human development that may be beyond education more in the health side, and there may be social social services type data there, which could really help, you know, effective modeling there. Corey and I have wanted to do modeling in this area. We had sort of a tentative plan to do it until this pandemic came about. So I don't know if that's helpful, but again, I think it's not a matter of how do the models accommodate it? They can, they can accumulate arbitrary context, they can pass on context from parent to child intergenerationally allow this accumulation. But the, the real question in my mind is, you know, what's the theory and how do we have model mechanisms that that reflect in some plausible way that theory? And that's an area where I need to, to learn more about what's known and, and how to think about the developmental context challenges um, um, aspects of developmental state, how to characterize that in a model. And, you know, if that's a point of interest on your part, I think there's huge opportunities there. I, I, it's hard for me to put a finger on a bigger opportunity in Asian-based modeling than, than that sphere. Um, hopefully that's helpful comments. Yeah, that was helpful. So I think it is kind of at the stage where um, maybe theory building is almost more important. Like we've been learning about developmental life course, but then also structural life course. And my like intuition here is that both are important. And there was some research done by the NIH, but they essentially just kind of gave some recommendations for how to integrate both. Not really, there's not really much theory or methodology on actually how to integrate them both. But uh, yeah, so that was, I guess, my like, kind of mm. difficulty thinking about it is because we were asked to reflect on it and we're asked how can you use this in your research and I'm thinking well it's it's I don't know I need to think about how to think about it first almost you know so yeah I guess that was just kind of a interesting thing I was thinking about this week yeah I need to learn more thank you I I'd love to learn more about you know, structural life course and and, mm -hmm. and and factors there. But, um, you know, I, I, I certainly think um, also the whole relational side of things and um, uh, side of, um, uh, there, there's developmental indicators that are specific to a child. Um, but then, you know, so much of life, uh, in, in a child's prospects in life also has to do with their relational environment, their, their interaction with others and the, the resources they can call on within their social network. Um, um, the, the, the exposures they have in their social network, you know, they, they shape their social network and it shapes them. And um, I, uh, um, I, I think there may be a, you know, some, some sociological aspects that ultimately also need to be thought of in that area. But um, I'm, I'm very interested in learning more. And um, I, I think there may be a role for models as theory building in this area. I know um, that is a sphere where those three social epidemiologists that I've mentioned um, I'm, I'm not sure if Anas Diaz Rook, uh, you know, views herself as predominantly as a social epidemiologist or, 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 or beyond that. But um, uh, I will say that I know George, uh, George Kaplan and, and Sandra Galea are both very interested in these issues of how could a model, you know, how do you, using models to, to explore these ideas at a stylized level would still be very, could be very, very eye opening. And, you know, is, is sort of trying on for size ways 
those different developmental perspectives might come together, for example, um, you know, structural, um, developmental uh, uh, perspectives involving more developmental variables. Like you could use a model to try to formulate ways those might, might combine um, into a, a kind of, uh, they might influence each other and interact uh, dynamically. Um, you know, uh, in, in ways that could be very helpful um, for, for thinking through um, uh, issues in that area. So, yeah, I do know a number of, of, of parties interested in that, um, including from a developmental uh, side. Hopefully those offer some value, but um, I'm, I, I'm fascinated by that area and its potential. Yep. That cool. Was cool. Good. 